Are you using Notion to stay organized? Maybe managing your content creation, training or workshops, projects, or you're simply using it to track important lists like maybe your home studio setup. Well, if you use Notion, you are going to love the new grouping feature that was recently released by Notion. Today in this video, I'm gonna show you some examples of the changes in this update to grouping and also why this is actually such a big deal why such a seemingly small thing can make such a big difference. Now, if we've never met before, my name is Kat and I help people to create more professional and engaging online presentations. And I use Notion to stay organized for content creation, making courses and training and workshops, all the things. And I'm going to show you two main examples today. One is using a more resource-based list of data, which is my home studio tech setup. And the other is more action-oriented, planning content. So I'm gonna show you how you could create a course or map out a training using these new features and why this is so exciting. So first let's talk about grouping. In the prior notion, the old grouping was board view only, and you could only organize by the single select, the multi-select, or by person. As a refresher or reminder, this is an example of my studio tech. You can see here that this is the board view. And so I've got these columns and these are the different types of tech that I have in my studio. So that's what it looked like before. The new grouping, you can actually use this new grouping in every view except calendar as of today. And you can group by almost every property that is out there. So these are really big changes. They are very exciting. Now, why would such a simple change be so exciting? Why, why do I love this change so much? I've narrowed down four reasons. The first reason is it takes sorting to the next level. It really does help you organize your information in a way that eliminates the need to filter out everything. You can use these groups instead as a way to clearly see information the way that you want. The other thing that I love is that you can easily collapse or expand your data so you can just focus on what you want. And you can also get interesting information by the group, meaning at that group level, you can actually count information, sum, average, min, max. We'll see an example of that. I'll show you what I mean. And then finally, you actually have the option of subgrouping in the board view. So instead of just seeing columns, you can now see columns and rows. These are all very exciting things. So let's dive in. We're gonna start with the tech list and show you some examples of how that looks. So we've got our studio tech list here. This is just using the existing board view and we are going to add the new grouping. So if I click on the three dots here on the right side, I can see group and because I'm in board view, subgroup. So I'd actually like to keep the grouping I have right now, which is the type of gear, and I'm going to add a subgroup. So let's do that. And I wanna see what's the status. So what is in use, what's occasionally in use, and what is no longer in use. And you can see that I can subgroup by a lot of different things, including price and including a relationship. So let's choose status, which is what I'm interested in. So now, we also have an option here to hide empty groups. I highly recommend this just to keep it clean so that anything that doesn't have a status is just hidden. So you can see I can hide this group. I can also in this menu decide to hide certain things. Maybe I only wanna focus on the things that are in use and I could hide something that is no longer in use. So if we take a look, you can now see that we have the columns are the same, but we have this new group. So I can actually toggle this group and close all of these toggles and maybe just open the group I want to see. And I can scroll down and I can see this board view, but it is divided now into the status. So those are all the things that are in use. If I wanna say, what are the things that are in use occasionally? I can now see this list. And as you can see at the top, I can still see all of the columns. So I still know what this is organized by. And then I can go down and see the things that are no longer in use. So this is one great example of 
the board view and how this is taken to the next level. But let's look at a few other examples and I've set some up already just to save time. Let's take a look now at a table view, but it is organized by status as well. So here you can see, once again, I can easily open and close these toggles, what's in use regularly, occasionally. And here you can see a number, and this is where I'm saying you can get important information by the group. Right here, this is just counting how many things are in each grouping, which is helpful, but you can change this. So you can click on this number and you can choose what information you want to see. Depending on what you have in there, obviously some things might be more important than others. But I happen to add some prices to these. So let's take a look at the total price in each category and brace yourself. <laughs> so here you can see the total of the prices, and I know this is a little bit small, but we can see all the prices individually, but now we can actually see the full price of this. Now let's do another one by type. So maybe I wanna know what's my studio gear by type. So this is a table view once again, and I've got this collapsed, but we can open these. We can see software, we can see hardware, and you can close and open these. And again, you could change this and you could say, I wanna see the price of all of these. How much have I spent on cameras? How much have I spent on accessories? If I want to toggle this down and look, what are the accessories that I've actually purchased? And you can also add a filter as well. So maybe I don't wanna see anything that's not in use, or maybe I only wanna see what's regularly in use. I could add a, a filter right here and say that the, the status is only things that are in use. Now this updates. And so now you can see the prices or I could just look at the grouping of what I am using. And so the filter can work with this grouping as well. Let's take a look at a list view. So this is everything that I have, again, by status. You can also change what you see on the side here. And it looks similar as before. We can see these and we can easily clean these up and have these nice toggles focus on what we want. And then we also have an example of in use by price. So this is only the things that we have. You can actually group by price. So when we saw before the group option, you can say group by price. And this is where you actually get to make some choices about whether you want to see this ascending or descending. And you can also set how you want to run this. So you can have a group range so maybe I only want to see the things in a certain group. Maybe I don't care about all the things that are under $20. I can actually change this and say, I only want to see things that are maybe $50 or higher. So I could do this and I could say, what do I want to group? Maybe I actually want to group everything by $150 brackets. So here I can start to actually group this information and see things by price and by category. So you can already see really easily how beneficial this can be if you are keeping track of a list like a resource. So now I wanna show you an example of how you can use this to actually plan something like a course. So now I have switched to a different demo and this is taking lessons. So these are actually the real lessons from my Elevate Your Online Presentations course except I have reversed it a little bit because all of these are actually uploaded. But here you can see a sample of how you can have the status across the top. So preparing a lesson, recording a lesson, editing, having it ready to be uploaded, and then finally uploaded. And you can see down the side, the rows that I have are grouped into the different modules. So this can help you to really organize information and planning. And so this is a more active use where you would actually drag and drop things. So if, I'm, if I've recorded this and I watch it and I say, you know what, I need some edits, I can move this over. Or maybe I have made edits and something is ready to be uploaded. I can move these across the board. And if I do start to upload content, I can start to move across which ones are ready to be uploaded. And so you can see how you can easily organize information. Maybe once I've recorded something, I can move that over. Or if I realize this should actually be in a different module, I could actually just move it up into another module and now it will take on that information. The other thing we can do is take a look at, once you've recorded everything, we could look at a table and say, I wanna actually know the length 
and the total for each module. Well, we can go over here and instead of counting how many lessons are in each module, I can actually go here and say, well, what is the total video length? And now I can see that this section is 18 minutes long, 27 minutes long, 26 minutes long, and 53 minutes long. So you can get a look at exactly what the breakdown is of the information that you are gathering about your course or your training. And really you can start to look at your information in new ways, but also you can see a lot of valuable information in one place. I encourage you to get in there, go to some of your existing databases and start playing around with these new grouping features to see how you can start to update, change and refresh your information so it can serve you better and you can focus on the things that matter the most. And you can use this to start creating more engaging and professional online presentations.